everyone. Welcome to Connect 2023. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for checking out my session and streaming this exciting topic, the FYI on KPIs. My name is Molly. I am super excited to be sharing this topic with you today. So go ahead, tune everything else out, check into this, and let's talk about some KPIs. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Here's what we have on deck for the session related to KPIs. We're going to talk about a few things. First of all, we are going to hit on the role of key performance indicators and talk about what they are, address what they are not. Um, I'm going to walk you through building a framework to help ensure you are measuring the right KPIs um, to achieve your business goals. So the right KPIs at your youth activity center so that you are achieving your goals month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. And then we'll share some KPIs that we've heard are most most popular, most important uh, to Jackrabbit clients and why you should be tracking them too. And then lastly, I'm going to share just a really quick demonstration of Jackrabbit's new business intelligence dashboards by our client success team. So let's go ahead and get down to the business. On that term, business, as a business owner or as a leader, I think we can all agree that Tracking key performance indicators is really important, but what's more important than just tracking key performance indicators is making sure that you are tracking the right ones, the right key performance indicators and metrics that actually play a role in you achieving your goals and growing your business. How many of you have seen the movie or read the book, heard the story, whatever, Moneyball? Now, I know this is a pre-recorded session, uh, but I'm just imagining that you're sitting right in front of me, we're in a room, or we are in a Zoom, and I can see you all raising your hand right now. Hopefully, you've heard of this movie. <clears throat> if you haven't, you can Google it, or I'm going to give you the Cliff's Notes version right now. <laughs> so Moneyball, it's the one where the GM of the age just completely flips the script on baseball by doing just that, by measuring metrics and challenging the metrics that people were looking at. So by challenging what scouts and coaches or anyone was measuring that they thought made a player be more successful because baseball, yeah, it's a game, but it's, it's a numbers game also. Um, he really made it apparent that choosing the right KPIs can be hard. You can choose the wrong ones. It can be hard to unchoose the right ones. So what did he do? Historically, in this story, so historically, stolen bases were used as a success metric in baseball. If a player could get to the next base while the ball was still live, get to one base from the next to the next, right? While the ball was still live, their propensity to score was higher. It still is. They have a higher propensity to score if you can steal bases. But so a lot of a lot of coaches, a lot of scouts looked at that metric as, oh, this person can steal bases. They're a good baseball player. We need more like them. What that one metric didn't measure was the risk associated with stealing bases. It was also really high. So, yeah, you could steal bases, but you could also get out. And if you get out, you're not going to score. So it, it, it's just riskier. So people were measuring the wrong KPI that they believed led to scoring more points than their opponent. So, so what, what else happened in the story? That was the hunch, the insight that this coach brought. He, the reality was that he learned measuring things like on-base percentage is a more accurate way to measure the success of a player. He assembled a team based around those KPIs, based around more relevant KPIs and that led to a greater outcome, a more desirable outcome, winning a World Series. I'd say that's pretty desirable, right? So now why am I telling a bunch of swim school, dance studio, gym owners, et cetera, about baseball? And it's because I really think it helps paint the picture of how important it is to choose the right KPIs to track and to measure success. Because yeah, you could be measuring a KPI and you could be measuring the thing because we've always done it that way, but is it the right thing? So in the case of Moneyball, measuring and optimizing to the right KPIs led to a more desirable outcome, led to the ultimate, I've never played baseball, but I'm going to go ahead and say led to the ultimate goal in baseball, winning a World Series. So before going any further, we know what, what KPIs are, just kind of went through all of those in that Moneyball example. So we know that KPIs are actual data. They're not hunches. They shouldn't be hunches. 
Um, the right ones will tell you a story if you are prepared to listen to them. And that's one of the biggest things that you can do as a person who is measuring something, who is the reports person at your youth activity center. Okay, what are these numbers trying to tell me? Really, really look, look at a couple different reports, look at a couple of different things and look at the, look at the numbers, <laughs> much like Shakira, like the numbers don't lie. You have to look at, you have to look at what they're telling you and you kind of have to cross your eyes a little bit and really look at the story. What, what story are those numbers trying to tell you? Be prepared to listen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> KPIs, they have numerous factors can play a role in them. We know that about metrics and what KPIs are. And then ultimately, you know, metrics, they should be used for important decision making. Um, and then you need to know when to adapt, adjust, or optimize around a certain process. And metrics are going to really help you do that. KPIs are not, they're not single um, inclinations that you look at every once in a while. You really need to have a set cadence for certain, looking at certain metrics and look, running certain reports. Um, they are not one aspect of your youth activity center and they are not gut feelings. So in the example of Moneyball, baseball GMs, they were looking at the wrong metric. And um, I'm sure you all might have a similar experience as to the one I'm about to tell you, but in marketing, I, I work on the marketing team. I hear buzzwords and the latest and greatest things that I should be measuring with a specific tool all of the time. Like, I'm sure you get those. Um, I'm sure you get those emails. I'm sure you get those opportunities in your inbox all the time. And it's it's really easy to have like that squirrel moment and be like, oh my gosh, I, I really, I should. I should, I could. Can I? Should I? Right? Like when you're presented with these opportunities of the latest thing, the greatest thing that you should be measuring, when I'm at that when I'm at that crossroads, this is this is what I like. This is what I like to do. I, I use the following framework to help determine what metrics I'm going to measure. Okay, so these are the set metrics that I measure. Someone is proposing that I measure this instead. Well, let me run through this following framework to determine if that is something that I should be measuring instead. So it all starts with your business objectives. And you, you know, these are the large scale objectives that typically require things like stakeholder input, collaboration, sign off. They could have gone through multiple iterations across your youth activity center before you get them locked and loaded in for the year, for the quarter, for the month and say, this is our focus. This is what's important to us as a company for the set period of time. So an example of a business objective, a lot of you all are going, it's the summer, a lot of you all are transitioning into a new season. Your fall enrollment is, you know, well underway. You might have an object an objective to increase new customer acquisition. It's a great one. So before you start measuring anything, start by identifying your business objective. And then step two in this framework is identify goals for each objective. How can you break up each objective into attainable, measurable goals. So again, if your business objective is to increase new customer acquisition, a good goal could be to increase brand awareness. Can't get new customers unless they know about you, right? Unless they are aware that you exist. The third step, <laughs> here we are, we're at KPIs, they finally arrived. The third step in this framework is where you are going to identify the KPIs for each goal key performance indicator, the KPI for each goal. This um, will help show you if your performance is moving toward your goal, if you're kind of like staying still a little bit, or if you're on the backslide. So if you're trying to increase brand awareness, what are some KPIs that you could measure? So if you're trying to um, increase brand awareness, you're probably running some paid advertising. Look at your ad impressions. Look at your website traffic. Are people clicking through to the... Um, or maybe, maybe you're not running, maybe you're not running ads. Um, maybe you have, um, maybe you have like a direct mail piece going on, or maybe you have um, some ads in the local paper that are telling people to learn more on your website. So look at website traffic. Those are some KPIs that can be used to measure how effectively you're meeting your business objective to increase new customer acquisition. So what good is a KPI if you don't have a target? The fourth step in this framework is what's your target? What's that number that you are trying to achieve when you are measuring 
certain things like impressions, like website traffic. So know what target you need to be um, striving for. And, you know, how do you do this? It's, it's a good rule of thumb to look at your historical data. I like to, whenever I'm coming up with targets, I like to look at anywhere between three years and four years worth of data. You should have this. You absolutely should have this. If you're using Jackrabbit, if you're using class management software, you have access to this. Um, look at your historical data. Do some research to see how other people in your industry are performing. A great source for this, if any of you all received um, any versions of the 2023 industry benchmark report that Jackrabbit produced earlier this year, you have a great source of industry benchmarks to compare your performance to right there. Um, and you can even use consultants to help you identify targets for your KPIs. I know there, there are a lot of great people presenting content um, on demand and in some of the panels at Connect. So look at all of their sessions. If there's somebody that you feel like, oh yeah, they are a trusted advisor. They are somebody that I could trust based off of what they're telling me here at this, um, at this virtual event reach out to them, use them, and help them help you identify some of your key targets. You can use consultants for this in the industry as well. Okay, so after you have your performance target set, that's that number that you want to strive to achieve every time that you run this report, it's time to start measuring. Now, some KPIs require different reporting cadences. Like I've mentioned, you have the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the so on and so on and so on. Um, it's important to set that frequency for measuring KPIs um, so that you can report those numbers to your stakeholders. Like just like, like I said, KPIs are not hunches. They're not things you look at every once in a while. You really have to set your cadence and you have to stay true to it. And then finally, the last piece of this um, KPI framework, it's my favorite part and my least favorite part all wrapped up to, all wrapped up into one called adjust and succeed. It's the best part because metrics can show you where you're succeeding, but they can also show you where you're coming up short and that's not always fun. Um, but just like the worst thing they can say is no, like, okay, your numbers are saying no, do something else. So then do something else, right? It's not, you. I say it's my least favorite part. I don't let it get me down too much. It's not fun to not hit your goals, but there's always something that you can do to adjust Try again and see if you succeed that way. So let's just say we're continuing to go through the steps of this framework that I've been, the example that I've been using for this framework. So you're running that paid ad campaign to increase brand awareness to drive new customer acquisition. But the cost per click on your paid ads is way higher than you think it needs to be. It's way higher than that target that you set for yourself that you're going to look at week over week. So what are some things that you could do? Um, if the cost per click is too high on your ad, well, maybe you should try changing your call to action. Maybe your call to action is an attention grabbing, or maybe it doesn't have that fear of missing out element. Maybe it could be a little bit more emotional, tying to somebody's emotions so that they're going to want to click on that ad. Like you could change up the messaging a little bit to make it more emotional to get them to click. If you do all of those things, try it, see if it lowers your cost per click. If you do, great, keep doing more of that. If it doesn't, switch, you know, go to something else. You can try changing up the messaging again, but maybe you need to look at the imagery. These are, like, this is the part where your expertise is, is put to the test a little bit. Adjust and succeed. Let the numbers tell you when you need to do that and when you don't need to. Okay, this slide right here is a more detailed version of the example that I was giving of breaking down the business objective to increase customer acquisition. So let's just say that you are, again, we can kind of go down a different wing of this silo. So let's just say that your goal is to increase um, awareness to lead to new, new customer, an increase, excuse me, in new customer acquisition. So your website traffic, you could have some good word of mouth or referral campaigns going on with your current customers and telling people go to Molly's Awesome Swim School to, to register for, for classes um, or go to Molly's Dynamic Dance Studio to register your child for classes um, and tell them that I sent you, right? So you could have that referral campaign going on. People are going to your 
to your website. So measure that traffic. And then on the certain pages, like I said, you could tell them go to the home page or go to the new students page on the website. If that's like, if that's the trail that you were wanting people to follow. So go look at, look at overall visits and then look at visits to that one page. Are they going up? Are they going down? Are they staying the same? And then this last one, another metric to measure, I have bounce rate. Um, Google Analytics, you can find both of those visit, visits and page views in Google Analytics. Um, Google Analytics doesn't really do bounce rates anymore. They've um, reframed it to engagement rate, but really it's it's when the person gets to the page, what are they doing? Are they staying there for five seconds and then hopping off? Or are they staying there for like a minute, a minute and a half? Are they looking around a little bit? Are they going to another page on your site or are they just completely going away onto the next thing on the internet? Those are some great things to look at. Okay, so I told you that we have some of the most popular metrics that we here at Jackrab Jackrabbit clients are measuring. Um, and so I have these up here. I have these up here for you. Um, first, we have class enrollment trends measured month over month and year over year. Pretty standard, right? Um, but it's it's a stellar metric, and it's 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 a very important metric for you all to measure. Um, the number of enrolled students. Usually, the ratio of classes a student is enrolled in. I am one student. I am enrolled in one class at your swim school. I am one student. I am enrolled in two classes at your gymnastics gym, and so on. It's one to one, one to two, um, running the number of enrolled students. Retention and churn. Real churn is often misunderstood. If you start with 100 students, this is just a round example here. If you start with 100 students and 10 leave, no, I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> Scratch that, reverse it. Okay, you have 100 students. You add 10 and then five leave. You're left with 105 students, which is more than what you started with, right? But your retention rate is not 100% just because you have more students. It's 95% and your churn is 5%. So real churn um, is something that is often misunderstood unless you have the right tool to help you look at it. And your churn percent, your churn, you need to know how many people are, are leaving your studio or leaving your school, your gym, what have you. So it's really important to understand what real churn is and look at that number constantly um, and compare it from year over year, month over month, et cetera. If you have more of like a monthly enrollment schedule. Um, class size, do you know your class fill rate? That's an important metric that we hear that our clients love to measure and that they really look at. New student count, just to know how many new students you are bringing into your youth activity center. And then finally, um, revenue per student. Jackrabbit's client success and product teams have been doing just some great work um, with our Jackrabbit clients. Some of you are probably listening to this right now, like, oh yeah, I've had this conversation with the Jackrabbit team um, to identify these six metrics and so many more that... Um, can help you, that we can help you track rather in Jackrabbit through the use of our new business intelligence dashboards, which hopefully you've heard about them. If you haven't, I'm going to give you all the information on them right now. Um, <laughs> so business intelligence dashboard reporting, it, it's now available in our top tier price um, at Jackrabbit. It's that's that 245 price and it includes an unlimited number of students for all of your business locations. Um, if you're in that top tier price, you can get access to this. If you're not, you have the option to buy up, which is extremely helpful. If that's something that you're interested in utilizing to measure these KPIs. So we have all of the data and we can help present it to you in a way that is actionable. So, um, like, like I said, we have that client success team. They're there to coach you on how to use these features available to you in Jackrabbit to increase and optimize your KPIs. Like for example, you're like, oh, hey, I, I see now that my churn rate is well above where I want it to be. Hey, Tina Jackrabbit, can you help me understand what features that I'm not using or features that I may be using a little bit incorrectly to help reduce that churn rate? Things like that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and cut over to that quick walkthrough that I told you about at the beginning of this session. Um, it is a walkthrough of the business intelligence dashboard. So you can be visualizing how you can use this tool at your youth activity center to constantly measure and track KPIs. Eliminate the guesswork and make data-driven decisions with the business intelligence dashboard.
view reports and access data regarding enrollment, student count, churn and retention, average length of enrollment, and much more. The KPI Summary page, which is updated daily, is a summary of your organization's enrollment information. Monitoring your daily enrollments and openings will allow you to see where you have an opportunity to make improvements. Take a look at your organization's enrollment trends for an overview of how enrollment is progressing and if you are on track with your goals. Use this data to track trends to see if you need to increase or decrease the number of classes, class size, staffing, etc. Knowing the average age of students who enroll in a class at your facility gives you great insight to know your target market. Tracking the lifetime average a student stays at your facility is helpful in determining the lifetime value of a student. View a monthly summary for enrollments, number of students enrolled, and retention trends to keep track of your monthly student counts and enrollments. This will provide you with insights into your sales and marketing efforts and tracking your retention rate will give you an indication of your organization's success. Keep track of yearly revenue by categories, classes, instructors, non-class revenue, and unapplied payments. This data provides revenue information so you can clearly see which classes offered at your business generate the highest and lowest income. And that's a wrap. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you found that demo helpful or at least enlightening. It sparked a little bit of curiosity in you. If you are a current Jackrabbit client and you want to learn more about the business intelligence dashboards or you want to get access to them, buy up access to them, you can do that by emailing dashboard at jackrabbittech.com. It's a quick email. Um, go ahead and shoot that out and somebody from the client success team will reach out to you and um, get you started on the right track there, set you on that path. If you are not using Jackrabbit and you're interested in the business intelligence dashboards, or if you're interested in seeing the reporting features that you can get natively in Jackrabbit um, and with this business intelligence dashboard, reach out. You can go ahead and start your free account today. You can go to Jackrabbit Dance or jackrabbitclass.com, depending on what business um, you own, um, and click on that free trial button. Or do you want better? You can go to jackrabbitclass.com slash free trial or dance slash free trial to go ahead and get started today. So um, thank you for streaming this session with me. Thank you for showing up at Connect. I hope that you have a great time just connecting with all of the other um industry thought leaders and our integration partners to really take advantage of what it is they have to share with you this summer so that you can reinvest the time that you have while your students are away, reinvest that time into your business and start the fall just, you know, so far ahead of the game. So thank you so much and I'll see you around.